Hey, John here, and welcome back. So, I promised to take a look at something afterwards. Uh, and by afterwards, of course, I mean after the tour. And so I will. So, how I generate my power to the field is quite simple. I have this block break, uh, destroying the blocks, obviously. And then they get sucked up by the vacuum hopper, put into a better barrel. Which I upgraded quite su substantially to 512 stacks, just as it says. And then that just pumps into these crucibles, but I need to stop it. That's the wrong button. And these crucibles then turn the cobblestone into lava. I'm not too sure if the system has been updated, and by that I mean the thermal expansion, because if I just had this one pipe, it had a tendency of clogging up a lot of the pipes, which obviously is a massive problem because if that happens it won't actually send them beyond the pipes and that of course means that not as much lava will be generated but that is eh, it's a bit mm, yeah, I don't know it I don't really trust it too much so I used the setup as it looks now with a pipe at each end just so the uh, the cobblestone I mean has a exit point even if it does go wrong and by wrong, of course, I mean if it tries to go into a barrel where it can't actually be. I think it was the one there. Yep, there. You saw that going down, then up again. That can bug out the entire pipe, and it does happen from time to time. The pipe system I'm using is the thermal expansion item ducts and fluid ducts. And the reason I'm saying both is because the lava has to get somewhere, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So I use the fluid pipes down here. I'm using the opaque just to. Slightly reduced lag, plus I don't really need to see it here, it's just because I love seeing things in pipes, especially if there's a lot of uh, things going through them, and also if they change the things in them, or, it's <laughs> or if it's a fluid. It all looks really cool, and usually quite vibrant as well. Where was I? Vibrant? Yes, okay. So, the method I'm using here of actually making these work without levers are just using the just type it in. The pneumatic pipe. No, not pipe. <laughs> pneumatic servo. The pneumatic pipe is back from ticket. Holy shit, that's a blast from the past. So the servos actually enable this pipe to work as a pump itself. This little box here only really does anything if you have the servo installed. And the method to installing it is just having the servo in your hand and clicking on any fluid duct or item duct, and it'll suddenly be able to work with a wrench you can just well move this around. I could make all the lava pop into this crucible if I want to. I can make the pop out of the crucible or I can entirely disconnect it if I wanted to. In this case I just wanted to pump the fluid out. Whew, that's a weird one. So I had a bit of an experiment with the lava fabricator down here. This obviously needs power to work and it doesn't work right now and I'll tell you why. If this doesn't generate enough lava to compete with the crucibles, so the energy I feed to it is just wasted, so I stopped doing that. So lava fabricators doesn't really work unless you want lava from a single block, and you've got a lot of excess power, which I don't really have yet. I only got 2 billion. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit of... interesting. Yeah, so then the lava goes into the lava generator, which I found to be more than enough power to sustain the entire field. And yes, that is 24, 6 or so fields I got up and running, which all actually use the same amount of power. And not only that, I got several harvesters all over the damn place. And yet, this entire system runs of one lava generator. Pretty cool, isn't it? The simple fact is, they don't really consume any power unless. That looks cool unless they work. And they only work once every 30 seconds or so, so the generator have plenty of time to make enough power for it to work. Okay, so let's go through some of this underground stuff here. That is the input. Well, no, it's the output actually, down into the mine here, or well, the underground field operating system. And I Again, I found that I didn't really need to pump that much power around, so all of the cabling down here is actually basic universal cabled. And that only drags around 80 uh, RF, 
per tick. And I found that is plenty. I really don't need anything large. I didn't, don't need the advanced version. I don't need any leadstone cabling or anything like that. No, no, no. The really easy cables from Basic Energy. Uh, no, not from Basic Energy, from Mechanism, I believe it is. And uh, let's have a look. Universal cables. Here it is. Yeah, Mechanism. It's just some steel and a redstone. It's really, really cheap. Or at least I think so. I'm not sure how cheap it would be if you want to make steel from scratch. I can't remember because I done that a long time ago. Anyway, the second system I'm using to make this work fluently without any clocking whatsoever is the Applied Energetics because they have the position export buses. Bus I. Buses? I don't know. And these are a fucking wonder. I set them all to tra only transport the seeds that the machine above them actually needs, which of course means that all the seeds are, well, tailor made for a specific space in a specific place in a specific area of my very specific field. It is that specific. And that of course means that pretty much any time I want to make anything new, I can just set up another. Uh, ME cable to it and then set up the entire process once again. You can see here that there is a bit of a drift difference here in the layering and over here as well. That is simply due to the fact that I had to expand the entire place because I just didn't have enough field space. So I had to, well, just dig and build. These walls are one thick as well, so it's not really too efficient. But anyway, I also found that if you have uh, haven't thought about it this in continuation, you will end up having a situation where one harvester, that being that one right there, uh, taking a lot of the space. That harvester over there is covering I think it's 12 or 16 fields. I believe it's 16 actually. It's from the corner over there. No, corner there and the corner there, so that's nine. Okay, I did. <laughs> I downgraded it evidently. I forgot about that. Downgraded it evidently. That's kind of hard to say. Anyway, I have set up each of these harvesters to harvest all of these fields one by one because I can't really set them to do anything more than that due to overlapping. I'm not sure how this mod pack will respond if I start overlapping several systems. So I didn't bother trying. I've got a hard enough time with lag as it is, because of course this is quite intense. And since I haven't used water and sprinklers instead, which might actually have been an error. Uh, but I'll like, tell you why I've done that. And that is simply due to the fact that the sprinklers have a slight, a very slight bone meal effect. Plus the fact that you can actually stuff them full of bone meal. Let me show you what I mean. Wrong one. Here. Next you got... A space for nine stacks of bone meal, of which of course you use. Well, it's quite a lot of bone for that, and it also spends them growing up plants. And as you can see, you can actually use them for more than just farms. You can use them for gathering other types of plants. In this case, I'm actually half using it and half not, because this, this is all accidental. All these arts magical flowers aren't. Here, because I've wanted them here, is a byproduct of the sprinklers. Because I've set up the farms in such a way that the sprinklers always reach one, uh, one tile uh, further out than I actually need. And that was a mis misjudging by myself because I thought they had the same range as water, which obviously they don't. Water has one range less than that, which means water would only reach here from the middle. But sprinklers reach over here. So, yeah. It creates a lot of extra grass, but I could actually use this for seeds, and I have. I got tons and tons of seeds. But since seeds don't really work with the farming mods I'm using, that being the uh, what mine factory. Yes, mine factory reloaded, which is actually a pretty good mod. <laughs> Not only has this created all the materials I could ever need. I believe in my tour video I actually showed uh, how the essence I'm using actually is being used. I'll show it again. So all of these plants are there. Oops. 
are creating essence of one kind or of another. Let's check the cow essence for an instance. These are one of the plants at the back, one of the newer one I installed. And they can create, well, XP for one. And I also believe they can make leather. I have forgot how though. Let's take a look. Ah, see? So, in general, all of this creates pretty much whatever I wanted to. And I've been taking advantage of that. You can see the amount of essence I got of each one. And it's simply due to the fact that I know if I can keep this field running, which is fucking easy. I'm not even gonna excuse my language because it is really that easy to keep going. I know for a fact that I'll have infinite materials forever. Only issue that I want to point out is that there's 63, I believe, different seeds you want if you want to have them all. And that is including the fruits, food seeds such as normal seeds, uh, potatoes and carrots. Even if you exclude them, that is still 60 plots. You might be thinking, but how many do you have, John? Well, I've got 22 or 4 here, I can't remember. Do the calculation. It's 2 for 6 times 4, which is 24, plus the 2 at the back, which makes 26. Okay, because I know, I actually forgot that. So I got 26 fields here, and that is a lot of space, and I picked this size of course because it's efficient. It's pretty easy to do because the machines here, they almost have the reach for doing this by themselves. It, they only need, wrong one to check, they only need a slight upgrade, that being the iron one. And iron of course is easy to come by, so I started doing that from the beginning. If you go to the first few fields are planted, I believe they are. No, that's just a trick one. Gold, yes. Aluminium, certus, ferrous, essence. Of course, essence of course is the base material you need to make magical crops. We got iron here at the very start, and glowstone is actually another cheat. I put this in way later. It was the redstone here it was. So yeah, that is basically my farm. There isn't much more to it other than the fact that you need to keep in mind that harvesters generate a lot of sewage. No, actually it's sludge, I believe. They generate a lot of sludge. And you need to keep on top of that because if the sludge fills up, you'll have a harvester that no longer can work. And obviously that is piss annoying. So you need to pump the sludge somewhere. In my case, I'm pumping it directly into this building over here. Well, I say directly, it isn't quite, but it's close enough. The system I'm using for this is, once again, the... Um, what's it called? I keep forgetting. Applied Energetics, that's the name. Oh, they're working, they're working! Shit. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. You get hungry and you get poisoned if you stand close to them when they work. But yeah, I'm using the Applied Energetics to feed up behind the machines. So that whenever I have some sludge, they'll all get a bit of it and start working and suddenly produce a bunch of sand. And Well, it's not only sand, it's different types of sand and I believe different types of dirt and mud as well. I can actually test that right now. I believe they make mud as well. Let's have a look. Mud is quite weird. Yeah. <laughs> oh, holy shit. So you can use it for throwing. I don't really see the point of it, but I suppose if you want to knock something away from you. You can make not mud blocks. Uh, I believe you can make armor of it as well. Yeah. <laughs> for some reason it's a thing you can do. I don't really see the application of this, but I suppose if you want a shit base, almost literally, you can use mud. <laughs> I could actually imagine it being quite interesting. Oh well, that has pretty much been it. Let me just deposit a little, this little pick into the pen. Hello. And then wrap up because there isn't really much more to my farm than that. You just need a stable source of power and it can be something as weak as a lava generator. And you don't really need as much lava as I'm generating here. This is only because I used them for the glacial precipitator and the extruder to make a bunch of other stuff. Let me just. Oh my God! Nope, 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 nope. Oh shit! 
109,000. No, wait, 191,000. Holy crap. Phew, that was a lot of snow. But yeah, I've talked through an entire day, which means this is a good time to say goodbye. So yeah, one last note though. You don't need to use the lava generator. You could use windmills or you could use solar power. Either way, it most likely works. I just haven't tried it with anything else because this worked from the very get-go. Is that a word? I think, the, I think so. But yeah, see you next time. And I'm going to be going over the next part of this being the animal farm. So see you then.